I, I figured we got to start with the most obvious thing because, you know, it was definitely a surprise. I get an email from Sony Red and they say, hey, I don't, I'm sure you didn't know this, but Joe Scarborough is a musician and, and he has EPs. And, and, you know, I mean, the first time you hear that, you think, oh, no, I don't, I don't know how exactly. this is going to be. You don't know how this is going to be. <laughs> and then I heard it and I was so yeah. instantly surprised and taken aback. And, and then when that leaves, you know, I, I was able to just sit and, and enjoy the songs for, for what they are. So, you know, we've got to start at the obvious spot. Like, how long have you been doing this? Have, have you always been a musician? Does this go all the way back? I, yeah, you know, my mom uh, pushed me to take. She she was a master. She got her master's in music at uh, University of Kentucky, and when I was five, she started pushing me to take piano lessons. She taught piano, and of course, being a five year old boy, the last thing I wanted to do was be in a class with all girls playing. You know piano right. and so that lasted for about three years four years i you know i wanted to be in like a shortstop uh for the atlanta braves when i grew up not a not a piano player and so of course the second i quit i started sort of uh making my way to the piano on my own and just started playing by ear probably wrote my first song at 10 and you know the interesting thing is it's music's always been the center of my life and always been the most important thing but Anybody that's ever been in a band knows you, you know, sometimes you, you got to make a decision at some point. So I was, you know, in college, had a band, was in law school, had a band, was in Congress, still had a band, <laughs> you know, practiced law, had a band, was on TV, and I didn't have a band. And I finally, a couple of years ago, just said, you know, enough's enough. This is the most important thing in my life, other, obviously, other than my kids. Believe it or not, when I ran for Congress at 29, that's insanely young to run for Congress. Didn't know anybody, but I had no fear because like, I'd literally tell people, hey, if you don't want to vote for me, America's great. Vote for the other guy. I'm fine with that. And it was the same thing with TV. I just sort of got on TV on a lark. And if people said, hey, you suck at TV, I go, yeah, I guess I do. That's OK. I'm kind of, you know, it's it beats practicing law. But music was the one thing that really meant a lot, meant the world to me. So it, I, I don't know, I guess I had always just recorded. I was sort of a studio rat for years and, and finally just decided to take a jump and, and see how it went. It's, it's gone a lot better than I thought it would. Now, as a, as a, as a TV personality and, and especially coming out of Congress, did was there any holding back when you decided I'm going to take this one public? I'm going to take Scarborough as as its own thing public. Like did, did is, is that walking off <laughs> like, a cliff? That is, you know, it's it's funny. It's it's sort of like me, when Nick and I started Morning Joe, we jumped off a cliff and we said, hey, listen, we're going to do a show different from every other show. We're not going to report on Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan and all the other things that everybody else was reporting about. We're just we're going to talk foreign policy and. Politics. We're going to have 15 minute interviews, and everybody said, Well, you're crazy, but it worked out. And so I kind of sat down with Mika uh, about a year and a half ago. I said, Hey, listen, I've recorded, written 400 songs. I've spent the past year like recording 50 of them. And I think I probably need to do something with my music before I die. <laughs> and, and I said, I'm going to get killed. Like, I'm going to get slaughtered, you know, but I just think I have to do it. And she said, I agree with you on both points. <laughs> You're going to they're going to kill you, but you have to do it because I will say, you know, Mika when we first started doing the show, I you know, I, I just never let people hear my music and she she had got got a hold of a CD and came back she said, "You know, you're 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 good at this. You need to do this." And so she pushed and we started playing live and you know, we played live every week on the Upper West Side, got good crowds, packed the places out, and, you know, it, it was, again, it went a lot better than Meek and I expected. We went down to South by Southwest, played there last year. That went well. And so we, you know, I I expected be a problem, but I just didn't care. I got to a stage where I said, well, this is what I love more than anything else. I'm going to do it. And if it goes badly, well, who cares? I, it's... I'm, I'm going to be finally pursuing what I love the most. 
It's it's I, I, so I was thinking about that part of it, obviously the getting killed, and and you know how I was talking about earlier with my first impression before I'd even heard it, that you sort of have to get past the novelty, and I thought how unfair that is for anybody that wants to do it because ultimately creative people are creative people, and having to tell them, oh no, you you were introduced to me just as a musician, that's that's the box that's the sandbox you have to play in forever. You were just introduced to me as an actor. So you can't be a musician and vice versa. It really is unfair because uh, I'll reference uh, an interview. The, the one before right. this was with uh, was with the band Rooney, which is Robert Schwartzman, the director, actor, right. you know, uh, of the Coppola family and all that. You know, yeah. it, and, and they grow up the same way. It's like, but I like doing all of these things. So for you to put yourself out there like that, it shouldn't actually be that surprising, even though it is. Well, you know, the thing is, everybody's got a band. I understand the skepticism. John McEnroe's got a band. You know, everybody's got a band. Uh, But what, uh, when I talked to Sony uh, and and Red, he said, listen, here's the deal. I, I, I I want to put out an EP a month. I've got 400 songs. I've recorded 50 of them. Most of the songs that were on, you know, the first EP and the second EP, uh, you know, a couple that I sent you, I just wrote, um, you know, I wrote one of them, the weeds are sounding one. I wrote that fourth of July weekend. I keep writing songs. It's kind of what I do, you know? And so I said, I'm just going to keep coming at people with songs every month. And the first month they may go, Hey, John McEnroe's band doesn't completely suck. (laughs) And then the second month, they'll be okay. Well, those are eight songs that aren't the worst songs I've ever heard. And then, the, you know, and then you know, after a year, you're looking back and you say, well, wait a second, this guy's released, you know, what, forty, fifty songs, and he says he's going to do it for the next three years, and they're pretty consistent, and some of them I I even like, and you know, it's like so I. I it, it it is exactly you're exactly right. It's by attrition, and at some point. You know, the music's good or it's not good. I, you know, I listen to things on Spotify, not to make a statement. I listen to things on Spotify because I like, I like the songs. So at some point it, it's, I, as I explained to Sony, I said, it's, I said, it's that scene in, in the Tom Hanks movie, a castaway where, you know, he keeps going out and the wave just keeps coming in, knocking him back. I said, well, that's me every month. It's going to be four more songs. And we'll just see how long it how long it lasts, and I, th- I hopefully hopefully it lasts a, a good long time. Well, I, I am a fan of these songs, and I will say, right from the beginning too, the one thing that you notice is you do so many styles that there is not a genre. You don't play in a genre, and then it occurred to me, well, look at that. Joe Scarborough is a millennial <laughs> because. You know, you know, artists these days, bands these days that, you know, when we grew up, that's what it all was. You, you sort of, you were a goth kid, you were a rock kid, you were a pop kid or right. whatever, you know, and you, and you didn't go outside of that. And, and the kids growing up nowadays and coming out nowadays, the artists, they don't play by that game at all. You know, everybody's sort of everything. And, and, and look at you, you've sort of fell into that as well. Like, it's so interesting. Well, like that first song that, that we hear with Mystified on the first EP, right. you know, it's sort right. of got this 80s sort of electronic flavor to it almost industrial right. parts your voice comes out like uh like the f- guy from psychedelic furs which i'm such a big fan of anyway and i think that's what was appealing. oh my god <clears throat> yeah that's a that's just that's just a huge compliment i yeah. mean yeah and, and, and but ghost right after that having stuff like that yeah, yeah but right after that you completely switch genres and you bring the horns in and then there's let's fall in love which is this great you know other ballad like where does that come from how do you find the ability to to be so flexible on your sounds well i think that i well first of all <laughs> you know i I've, I've been around a while so you know i i remember going to the record store when i wasn't around when the hindenburg crashed but i do remember walking to the music store and seeing a uh, murmur uh when it first got released yeah. i said oh my God, what is that? And and picked it up, took it home, listened to it. And I remember being just as excited. Uh, you know, it's so funny. I was just remembering this the other day because I wrote, uh, I've sort of been listening uh, to, to Weezer again. But I remember getting elected in 95 and people asking, you know, hey, so what music do you listen to, new congressman? And, you know, a lot of the Republicans were saying Karen Carpenter and, 
you know, uh, the Carpenters, all this other stuff. Pat Boone. I was like, well, I'm listening to two new groups you probably never heard of, Weezer and Green Day, which in you know '94 it was you know they were still pretty new. So I've been, I've I've obviously influenced by a ton of stuff, especially the Beatles, but. The the most exciting thing about how things are today compared to how they were, you know, 20 years ago is I've got studio in my house, you know, it's Pro Tools. I can experiment. I can bring in a horn for a song if I want to. I can, you know, if I decide I want want to, to get a completely different sound, I can do that as well. You have, you know, you have extraordinary freedom uh, recording that you just didn't used to have. I mean, it used, it used to be, you know, run into the studio and, you know, save, save as much money as you can and get three or four songs that sound about the same. So people can pigeonhole you. I think there's just so much more freedom now, not only with recording, but also obviously with distribution that you can experiment a lot more. And especially if you're doing projects like I'm doing month to month, I think my biggest challenge actually is narrowing things down a bit. Mm -hmm. I have, I have all this freedom, but you're right. Going from a psychedelic furs song to sort of a, a one with a big horn section and then sort of a three, four U2 type ballad. I think as I move forward, the real challenge is still going in, in some different directions, but at least making the individual EPs a little more uh, consistent. On the on the new EP, you know we've heard we've heard Monkey House already, which mm-hmm. sort of has the uh, what is that the Let My Love Open the Door chords and the artwork that goes with this EP sort of says it all. I mean, it's it's laying right out there. <laughs> I spend yeah. most of my time, especially in the past year, talking to bands about politics. Right. Musicians, that's, they've always been great bedfellows, politics and music. It, it sort of does surprise me a little bit, and maybe it's because you, know, you write what you know, and this is what's surrounding all of us, but that's, that's sort of what I'm getting from this, you know, from this EP as well, is uh, direct attack. I don't know. Am, am, I, am I wrong? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, the the second song, uh, the, the sort of the Weezer inspired song, "When Will You Go," was written Fourth of July weekend, and that was, you know, it's written two days after uh, the president of the United States decided to write some really nasty tweets about my fiance and myself. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard for that not to influence you, but it's so funny. Everybody was calling because, you know, it's, it was a tweet where he said that, you know, we had uh, hung out at Mor-a-Lago for hours and Mickey came with a bloody face and all of these other lies. And it just it sort of exploded. And everybody was texting and calling, hey, are you okay? You and Mika okay? Well, we were okay. We were recording that weekend. We had, had planned to go ahead and record. And so I decided, you know, just to go with it and wrote the song. And I, I think because uh, I think the August EP is probably going to be a little more focused on politics than most of the stuff that I do, uh, because you don't want to get hit over the head with it. And don't I, I didn't get into music to talk about politics. I actually love music because it's a break from politics, but sometimes, you know, sometimes the two go together. And it was just a crazy, crazy time when, uh, you know, when we were going in to record the August EP and I said, Hey, hey guys, I think I'm, I think I'm going to write another song. I'm going to write a, 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 a song uh, that we're going to stick in there. And so that's what, when we go ended up being. And you were telling me that it was, it, it was originally supposed to be a bit more cars influence, but yeah, went Weezer. Right? Yeah. You know, I always loved the beginning of, uh, best friend's girl i just love i love the guitars on that i love that clicking like a, 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 you know uh almost like a direct input and i always loved rick okasic's producing and uh and so that's the direction i thought it was going to go in and then just by dumb luck i stumbled over an an old old amp and you know i've been playing a twinder uh, a fender twin reverb and a telly since you know the early 80s so very straightforward American sound, and I haven't really deviated from that. But I couldn't get uh, the right sort of distortion uh, that, that I wanted. And I stumbled over an old amp that Rivers Cuomo had used on the Blue Album uh, for Weezer. And it um, 
it's a Mitchell Pro 100 or something like that. And played it, turned it up. I got this great distortion sound. It's really clean. It really is, uh, and we were talking about this before, it really actually sounds more like the Green Album Mm -hmm. than the Blue Album, if you're a Weezer aficionado. And listen to it. I said, "Okay, wait a second. I, I actually, you know, it actually, it, I, I, it, it and this, what, this is another great thing about Pro Tools I, because when I first wrote it, I said, well, you know, maybe it's going to be like I don't know if you've ever heard of M83 Graveyard Girl, mm-hmm. but I love you, what, the song. It, what, I play that all the time at my house. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. Sounds like we have similar, similar tastes mm-hmm. because we're you're you're hitting all my high notes as far as <laughs> psychedelic furs and everything. So I started out going, well, you know. We've got I've got this huge sort of room, sort of garage type room where we put the drums in the middle and just get a massive sound. So I thought I was going to go that direction, and then I said, No, wait a second! I think I'm going to tighten it up a lot and I'm going to make it like Best Friends Girl. And but it ended up when when I heard the amp, I said, Wait a second! This is you know actually the Weezer sound might work best and. And so I went that direction instead. And again, that's the exciting thing about having Pro Tools and having a studio. And it's, it's, it's a pretty simple studio. And, a, a, you know, the, the main part of it is a fairly small, small room. But you can, you can do a million different things with it. And so that's the direction we went. It's, it, it's such a fun song. And again, that's what I've sort of felt about all of them so far. And the fact that you have, like, as you said, 400 songs sitting around, you know, just, yeah. just waiting with 50 of them already recorded, it's insane and awesome. And so I'm excited to hear what the rest of them are. I mean, so the two songs, you know, I've heard from this EP. What's, what's left on it? I've got a song called Party Line, and it was actually a song that was inspired by... Um, Heaven. Uh, while we're talking about psychedelic furs, mm-hmm. which was one of my one of my favorite songs uh, from the psychedelic furs, and then um, the last song is uh, is Catch Me If You Can, which is a pretty s- straightforward sort of indie rock song. So I I think there are more guitars on the second EP. The horns are are sort of <clears throat> reeled in a good bit. Uh, and so it, it, this sounds probably a little more consistent from beginning to end, but there's still, still a, a lot of different styles going on there. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoy, like I said, the EPs and enjoy talking to you too. Yeah, that's a, well, it's exciting. I really, really, I can't thank you enough for having me on and, um, it's, it's a real thrill for me. And I, I, I mean that.